Now equations which involve trigonometric functions. So in this class, we will understand, we will develop a general template using a specific example, we will gen generate, we will create a template using which you can solve any such equation. So here is the equation that we are going to solve and this equation is actually relatively simple, okay, but it, it illustrates all the basic concepts which we need to solve uh, these kind of problems. The first thing that we need to do as soon as we encounter this such kind of problem is we want to convert uh, this equation into an algebraic equation in terms of normal x square, y square, those kind of things, okay, those kind of variables. So to do that, in other words, we want to get rid of this cost. Notice that you simply cannot take uh, the uh, basically the cosine inverse on both the sides and cancel the cost. No, 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 that would be actually incorrect. Okay, so never solve these problems uh, uh, by, by cancelling like just like you took an, an anti-log or uh, if you took the exponent. No, that is not how the trigonometric functions are solved. Okay, so what we need to do here is that we need to create an algebraic equation uh, for this one. Okay, so algebraic equation for this one is actually very, very simple. We can simply create it by noticing that there is an identity uh, involving cos 3x which gives me the cosine in terms of normal cos x okay, minus 3 cos x. Okay, so this is a simple identity and this is equal to cos x. Okay, now we use the substitution. Now we can use the substitution cos x is equal to t to actually create an equation in terms of t. Okay, create an algebraic equation. Now notice that although t appears all across, okay, so there is t uh, everywhere, okay, in all the terms. I cannot really cancel the t, right? That is the basic principle. I just cannot cancel the variables. I cannot, as soon as I factor out a variable uh, on both sides, I have a solution to the equation. So I cannot just cancel it out. So instead, of cancelling it out, what we do is that we write this equation as 4tq minus 4t is equal to 0. And now from here, we can actually cancel the 4 because that is just a constant. So constants can be factorized out, factorized out from each of the terms, but uh, we cannot in the same way factor out the variables. Factoring out the variables we can do, but we have to keep those factors. So like we are doing here, so I factored the t out, but I have kept it there because it is one of my solutions. I cannot just lose a solution that would be very, very bad. It would feel bad. Okay. So now we have this, we can factorize this further. I can write it as t using the formula x square plus 1. And X, uh, x square minus y square is equal to x plus 1 x plus y into x minus y using that particular uh, identity I can write it like this. Now from here this equation we can see is satisfied for all the values of t that I am writing here either if t is equal to 0 so that is one solution or if t is equal to minus 1 that is the second solution or if t is equal to plus 1 that is the third solution. Now we have found out the solution in terms of t but now we, we, we need to find the solution in terms of x which means that we want to find all the angles for which the cosine is actually equal to 0 or cosine is actually equal to minus 1 or cosine is actually equal to plus 1. So let us just look at first look at the cos x is equal to 1. Let us find the values of x for which uh, the cosine of x, the, the angle, uh, the, the angles x for which their cosines would actually be 1. So we know that one such angle is 0 right here. Okay. So those who, are, those who have taken the classes of Doris tutor have understood sine and cosine always in terms of the unit circle. So what we do is that we create a unit circle, we take any radii as the hypotenuse and then draw a triangle. If we do this, then this angle theta 
um, we can find out the sine theta and cos theta like this and from this if you if you were to learn your sine and cosine using this then you can very very simply say that when theta is zero then the cosine of that zero would be this full line that i am drawing here which is one okay it will be one it will be the uh, full radius so of course this implies that my x is equal to zero so that is one of the solutions now notice that that is just one of the solutions there are many many solutions uh, there are many many angles for which cosine of that angle is zero and why is that the case because in the unit circle in this unit circle if you have understood it uh, in, in those terms like i said before if we go back one full circle we again come back to the same radii so if we go back around the circle 360 degrees then we come back to the same position therefore not only is my cosine one for zero it is one for two n pi so zero comma two n pi where n is a natural number okay it is natural number means numbers one two three and so forth okay so that is one solution of x that is one solution of x in terms of uh, in in terms of the natural number in terms of n okay and like like we said this one solution when cos x is equal to 1 this one has given us infinitely many angles and it is very important that you express your answer like this you just don't write zero and be done with it that, that is incorrect we have to express our answers in such a way that we are able to convey all possible angles for which cos x would be 1 and that is what we have written here now let us move on so let's just give these numbers 1 2 and 3 so 3 we have solved let's let's look at 1 we want to find all the angles for which cosine x notice that i want to find out all the angles for which cos x is actually equal to 0 so what are all the angles for which cos x is 0 it is 0 here and here okay so this is plus pi by 2 and this one is minus pi by 2 okay there are two positions on that unit circle for which the cos x is zero so i have to give the solutions for both of these places okay i cannot just leave uh, one of them out so i have to give uh, the solutions so for this this implies and this happens you will if you only write pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 or if you simply write plus minus pi by 2 that would be incorrect that is one possible solution this implies that x is equal to plus minus 2n minus 1 pi by 2 where n as we have already said is our natural number okay so you can write it in curly braces so that is all possible values of the of the angle for which our cosine of that angle is actually equal to 0 so this is 1 now let us move on to 2 so this is 2 let's see for what values of cos for what what angles my cosine is actually equal to minus 1 that is what we want to find out so cosine of x is equal to minus 1 which implies that my x so cosine of uh, the angle is minus 1 here at this location okay always go back to the unit circle it is very important understand your sines and cosine in terms of unit circle so this actually happens if you were to uh, look at it this actually happens at this angle is actually pi okay so the cosine of pi is minus 1 but it is not just 1 it is not just pi for which it happens it happens for 3 pi also when i have come back around 360 degrees it happens for 5 pi also so this happens for all so now i can write my equation as this is true for 2n minus 1 pi okay where n again is a natural number so if i substitute n as equal to 1 2 minus 1 is 1 i get pi if i substitute n is equal to 2 then 2 to the 4 4 minus 1 is 3 so i get 3 pi and for other values of n i would get uh, other solutions uh, to the to the last uh, sort of this uh, last uh, equation in some sense okay so 
this is how we solve the trigonometric equations and our answers should always be in this form so each of our answers will not give us a one angle it will give us many many angles and all of those angles are in terms of the natural number n okay so if you have understood this problem correctly i am very sure that you will be confident to solve all such uh, problems so definitely do practice do practice this problem also okay that will give you more uh, clarity and if there is any mistake then uh, definitely put the in the comment section below the one of the things that i wanted to also discuss is that why is this happening why does this happen why does this hold true what what is the property of the cosine which makes us have so many solutions see the thing is the cosine is many to one and sine and all trigonometric functions are many to one which means that for many many angles i will get the same value i will if i apply cosine to all of these angles i will get the same answer and because cosine sines and trigonometric functions in general are many to one okay that is what in terms of functions we understand it because they are many to one i get this behavior and this is what i am trying to express here in terms of my answer also that we are solving for a many to one uh, function hopefully things are a bit clearer now if you have doubts questions do put them in the comments below and we will be happy to look at those thank you